are so happy now to be joined by the one and only Anastasia Raitanu, the president of the Tourist Guides Association of Northern Greece. Hello, and thank you for allowing us to come visit your beautiful city. Oh, hello, and thank you for letting me be here. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. So we, we know about Saloniki. We know it's the second largest port in Greece, but the history of this port dates back 2,000 years, correct? And even more. Even more. <laughs> so Thessaloniki was founded in the 4th century BC, between 315 and 316 BC, by Cassander, who was the king of Macedon, or the Macedonian kingdom, successor of Alexander the Great. And, and um, what I think of the interesting sides of the history is that he named the city after the name of his wife. She was Thessaloniki, and she was the half-sister of Alexander the Great. So since then, for a bit less than 2,400 years, we're calling the city by the same name. Saloniki, one of the, the prize pearls of the Byzantine time as far as architecture and art? Thank you very much for this question, which is the main core and the main characteristic of Thessaloniki. So as you very well said, Thessaloniki has been appointed and uh, it is characterized as a co-capital of the Byzantine Empire. So which means that after Constantinople, it was the second major urban center. It, was, uh, it has been located in a very strategic place. It has been a, a major uh, city port, which connected and linked the maritime routes with the hinterland of the Balkan Peninsula. And, and it has been located in a very strategic place in the major road that connected Rome with Constantinople. Mm. So from, the, from Constantine the Great, to the Paleologan era, that is from the middle of the fourth century until 1453, Thessaloniki never stopped functioning as a major urban center. Here in the city worked, uh, lived and worked some many, many uh, uh, major artists who really uh, created amazing iconographical programs in terms of frescoes, painting, mm -hmm. Uh, as well as mosaics. So here, w when a visitor comes here and wants to see what the Byzantine past left to, the, to our days, is to, uh, he sees, he has the, the uh, opportunity, the unique opportunity to see frescoes and mosaics dated from the 5th century up to the 15th. Wow. <laughs> Asia. Tell us about Hagia Sophia and why it's such an important landmark of this great city. So this is one of the most important churches of the city. It was built originally in the 5th century AD, obviously, but then it got destroyed by a fire in the 7th and it was rebuilt. There, of course, there have been a lot of changes in the structure of the building. Originally, it had the middle section was higher than what we're looking at today, and the two side sections were lower. So in the 9th century, there were galleries added to the side section so that it got the shape that you see now, the one that reminds us of a box. But inside, there are wonderful mosaics, and of the 9th, the 10th, and the 12th century with golden background, which makes the the monument very very important very special because um, it does not happen very often that we have war mosaics of the Byzantine time period so well preserved as in this monument. The 
they started constructing it when Emperor Galerius, who ruled together with Diocletian, had moved his seat, political seat, to Thessaloniki. So he had a palace built, he had the rotunda built, this round building. The idea is the same as of the round building, the Pantheon in Rome. Of course, this is a lot smaller and was built later, but the idea is the same because we're still in the Roman Empire. So most probably it was built to become a temple of some of the pagan gods, we don't know exactly, but it never did. So a bit later it became a Christian church, most probably in the time of Theodosius the Great, so most probably 5th century. So there are mosaics, wall mosaics still, that remain in there either end of the 4th century or beginning of the 5th century, they're dated. And then later on, when the Ottomans were here, it was converted in the 16th century into a mosque. What is behind us and why is it such an important landmark in the city of Saloniki? So this has become the landmark main symbol of the city because of the location on the waterfront and it is a tower that was part of the fortifying wall of the city and was built in the 15th century after the city was occupied by the Ottomans. So it was built by the Ottomans and replaced the older Byzantine tower that got destroyed during the, um, uh, the fight and the occupation. It was uh, originally used as a prison for many centuries. Then uh, the prison was moved in the end of the 19th century. Then people did not really know what to do with it. There was even in the end of the 19th century and the early of the 20th, a committee that was responsible for the beautification and modernization of the city. So they decided to demolish it because they considered it an obstacle. Thank God they ran out of money. And then during the Second World War, they even painted little houses and trees around the tower trying to camouflage it as uh, during the world wars there was to the right of the tower there was a small airport so the area was bombed in of course you cannot really camouflage a tower by painting it I mean you can see it's a tower but thank God it was not hit mm -hmm. 